Um, all right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Layla, and I did get a good chuckle. Thanks, Rona, for <laughs> the office background. Um, I have so many of those. Uh, like I, the Simpsons couch. Sometimes I'm sitting on that one. <laughs> this one's actually a video loop, so like Stanley moves. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> that one's kind of cool. It's cooler than mine. Mine's static. Um, anyway, so I appreciate it. Uh, always takes the, the edge off a little bit because we're always in these things all day. Um, anyway, so I am going to be presenting um, walkthrough number five, I believe. And that is text analysis to social media data. Um, I, I selected this chapter because it's honestly my, probably my favorite topic because um, it's something that I, I don't do enough of. I wish I could do more of, um, but something that I want to get more uh, involved in as part of my um, research as I enter um, my PhD in the fall. So I am, prepping for that. Um, so bear with me if I am, maybe if I, I sound a little like gappy, but you know, I'm still hang, I'm still trying to figure it out. Anyways, so um, my name is Layla. Like I said, I currently work at the University of Miami. I'm a research analyst. Uh, a lot of my research focuses on um, substance abuse and uh, actually working with text data, so corpus of text to um, parse out um, identifiable drugs, uh, drugs of abuse um, to help um, investigators potentially detect patterns. Um, so that's where my focus lies. It's really, really fun stuff actually. Um, so let me go ahead and jump in to the presentation. <clears throat> All right, and let me just um, also feel free to jump in if you have questions. I prefer a more organic layout instead of like waiting for questions, but I can't so that I can actually see my presentation. I, I hid the little controls so I can't um, monitor the chat. So just chime in if you have a question. It'll help me a lot. All right. So um, this book, this chapter was really fun, like I mentioned. Uh, there are a few learning objectives that um, the chapter covers. Understanding how to retrieve data from Twitter, or in this case, this was from the data EDU package, so it was already um, extracted. Uh, understand the robustness of Twitter data, so we're gonna take a look at it. Um, basic principles of natural language processing, in this case, it's um, counting the frequency of words and doing some sentiment analysis. Um, learning how to use the tidy text package to analyze social media data. Um, understand what a sentiment analysis is and how to apply it on that Twitter data. The main packages that I'm going to use or that were used are the tidy text package, dplyr, and then I am going to show you very briefly um, our tweet, um, which is uh, using um, Twitter's uh, API application program interface to retrieve data. So what is text analysis? Um, I would simply put, just put this in Google and I got something that says, it's a process of automatically classifying and extracting information from unstructured text and involves detecting and interpreting trends and patterns to obtain relevant insights from data. So someone on Google said this. Um, some use cases why text analysis might be handy are to count the number of keywords that appear in survey responses, for example, or analyze word patterns in message boards or forums like social media, for example. Um, analyze public opinions on certain topics. So a lot of people in social media analytics and marketing always want to see how consumers feel about their latest product. Um, so that's it's usually really insightful. In this particular case, our data source is Twitter and our stratification is actually going to be using the hashtag. Um, 
I think maybe it's a safe bet to, to assume everyone knows what a hashtag is, but it's the pound sign. Um, you'll see a lot of the, R, the hashtag RStats community is very vibrant and helpful. I have had so many questions answered because of it, and I love it so much as part of why I am a user. Haha. <laughs> um, anyways. So this is what happens when you go into Twitter and you just type in the hashtag Tidy Tuesday and you get the, the, the top posts and you can, you can um, stratify that, the results by the latest people, photos and videos. So photos that have been tagged with Tidy Tuesdays and videos that have been tagged with Tidy Tuesdays. Also people who are named Tidy Tuesday or um, potentially have in their bio Tidy Tuesday. And then obviously the latest sorts by the most recent tweets. We're gonna import the um, our data from the data edu package. Um, if you just call data edu colon colon TT tweets, that's Tidy Tuesday tweets, um, you can see what that looks like. And I'm gonna to switch to my R Studio um, every once in a while to show you exactly what I mean. So if you look at the, um, I think I've had these loaded already, but just in case, um, raw tweets, you can see that we have about uh, 4,418 tweets and 90 variables. So Twitter gives you so much information, um, the individualistic user ID, the status ID, which is tagged with the tweet itself, the date it was tweeted, the username, how it was tweeted, in addition to the tweet itself, um, things like um, if it was a retweet, how many people favorited it, how many hashtags were used in that particular tweet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of really robust information um, that comes from Twitter, including geographical information, which is really handy if you have any kind of geospatial background or know how to apply like some of the geospatial packages within R. Um, you can extract the um, Latin longs if the user provides it um, to have like a geographic representation of uh, your data, which is really cool. Um, but also, if you want to use the RTweet package and get it directly, um, you can uh, install the RTweet package and use the function search tweets for hashtag Tidy Tuesday. And um, our t uh, Twitter allows you up to 18,000 um, tweets in a single request. Um, if you need more than that, there are options to keep retrying until. Uh, you get as many as you want, but you have to remember they are also developer accounts. So on the free tier, if you just use our tweet straight out of the box, you are going to get up to 18,000 and it will limit you for the past seven days. So I included a link to the our tweet um, GitHub uh, so you can um, see more on um, the functions that are in there, the vignettes, et cetera, like the package website. Um, so let me just show you what that looks like really quick. If you go to our tweet and you do search tweets, you'll get like a little progress bar, but it's basically, it was super fast. So I only have 159 results in the past seven days with the hashtag Tidy Tuesday, which kind of makes sense, right? So if you look at if you, can, if you sort by created that date, you get um, from March 30th, which is about a week ago, to today, most recent one. And, I have a question. Yeah. Is the hashtag um, case sensitive? Um, no, I don't think so. So I believe I put Tidy Tuesday because that's how it's kind of used. Um, I mean, if you search, but I think that. Um, yeah, it's not. So if you look at this tweet right here, it's lowercase. 
the question. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Sean. Yeah, so... <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so um, can we um, scrap historical data? For instance, now you scrap uh, from 30th to this. Why don't we scrap from the last month's historical since, since we... Can we do have that? Yes. So right. there is a function in the R tweets. Um, so I can do here and do search 30 day, oh. or you can do search full archive, but this requires you to have a premium API. And the only way you can ha have a premium API is if you sign up with Twitter for developer account right. and right. fill out a whole application. So it's right. a little bit of a process. Right, I'll chat you up that one. I'm, I'm in the process of getting some data to it. Yeah, and I, I'll show you uh, in the resources at the end of the my presentation. Um, actually, Twitter developers have restructured their kind mm -hmm. of hierarchy. So I used to pay um, a couple of years ago, I used to pay $99, not me, but my organization used to pay $99 a month for premium API access, which gets me a um, hundred requests. So for APIs, that's like how many times I, I use the API um, and a hundred requests a month, um, regardless of how many results come back. Um, but now they've kind of restructured it to make it more openly available, especially since COVID, because a lot of people were trying to do COVID related research with social media data. So they've, they've kind of like opened up a little bit and now they have an educator tier. So if you're using Twitter for the purposes of educational or scientific research, you can get premium API for free. It's really nice. And they have a lot of packages. You, their documentation is trem like tremendous. It's like so long, but very comprehensive. And um, it's more geared towards Python users, unfortunately. But if you can understand the terminology and uh, understand, you know, a little bit of the syntax of Python, you can probably easily apply it to R as well. And also, um, even if you can't, um, um, what's his name? Michael Kearney, um, the author and maintainer of the R2 package, he's very responsive. So I've actually, I've emailed him before um, about uh, an issue I was having and he was really quick to respond and help me. So that was a long answer to your question, Sham, but yes, it's, it's very possible. Thank I you. I accidentally no worries. restarted my thing. Okay, so um, that was just a, a, a brief intro on how to gain it, gain, get some data directly from um, Twitter with their API. <clears throat> so this is what our data looks like um, from the data EDU package. It's already in an RDS format. So if you just look at, look at it as we've done, you can see that we have over 4,000 records by 90 columns. It's a lot, we don't need all of our, um, we don't need all those uh, variables. Um, and right now our goal is simply just to have each row be a word. So the only variables that we really need for the purposes of this demonstration is the status ID, which is the ID associated to a tweet and the tweet itself. So what we're gonna do is you're going to, we're gonna take that, those raw tweets <clears throat> and filter it. There is a, a variable for language. So if the user is um, using Twitter in English, so that, that will be in um, English. And then um, select only those two variables. For the, these are from the dplyr package, filter and select. And then um, just to be safe, we're going to convert the status ID, which gets imported as numeric, but convert it to character. So nothing weird happens. How does it classify, like if somebody tweets in English and Spanish or like another language? The same yeah. question. <laughs> does it does it choose one? Does it have a, a default or like? I I really think it's based on the user. So as you're developing, like, 
Yeah. Same. So if you are using um, Twitter in English, um, so as you set up your account or whatever, okay. um, then okay. that would be with, with English. I don't think Twitter detects a language. So if you were to tweet something, even though, like, for example, I am an English speaker and my Twitter is in English. And I don't think if I were to tweet something in Spanish that it would detect it and put Spanish um, or the combination of English and Spanish. Um, because I, I definitely have had uh, the case where I've pulled information. Um, when being in Miami, you have a lot of Spanish speakers and you would get a lot of Spanish, even though they're labeled as English. So that's a, that's a little tricky. Um, you would have to have a separate, um, I think that would be a, um, a specific lexicon for Spanish, for each, for dif the different languages. And I'll get to lexicon in a second. Yeah, I have a question. What's up? So um, um, sometimes you may see, um, maybe for my own local language, people mix up English and um, with another language. So um, when you scrap that data, will it also include such kind of mix of sentences or language that is a mixture of English and another language? Or that is a way that you can remove those ones and select only those that are only English in, to the fullest? So I'm not sure, to be honest. I, like I was saying before, I think it depends on the user, their primary language. So if their primary language is something other than English, I think it would get scrapped, um, even if they were to tweet in English, but we can test it really quick right now. So it, the first couple tweets um, here are, actually, this has been very recent, because when I did it, when I was writing this, a lot came up in Spanish. Okay, so here's one for in Spanish. Um, we can say filter um, TT user, oops, screen name. guy or girl um and then uh let's see select um i think it's language a lang maybe it's lang what did she use yeah lang No. Did I just break my R position? Spanish. So this person um, only has, I guess, has won this past seven days and his is, is in Spanish. But you see how it, it's, it's like ES for like Espanol. So not like how English version of Spanish. To me, I think that kind of indicates it's users based. Yeah, I have another question. Um, so for instance, um, I want to crop um, historical tweet like 10,000 or 20,000. Mm -hmm. um, um, would that true or I mean historical, um, how long do you think will it take? Uh, do I need to need my computer to keep scrapping or is not that too long stuff? Um, you cut off in part of your question, but I think I got it. So, okay. Yes. Um, the, the, question, <laughs> the answer okay. to your question is yes. I, um, when I have, uh, when I've pulled, needed to pull 
one time I, I think I did a hundred thousand tweets and uh, I did the full archive, not the past 30 days. Um, you have to hit, the issue is that there's an option. So if you look here on search full archive, there is an option here for um, save dir. And then even from, so this is looking from date to date. So you have to specify like the, the duration of when you wanna do it. But the search 30 days also has something similar where you can um, specify the, the date range and save dir. Um, this is kind of like where it saves your data when it times out. So an API call, if you keep, um, if you keep, if you pass like a, a certain limit, it's going to time out. And so what this function does is it does another request. So even though you have, um, you may call the API once and it's like 100,000 tweets that you're trying to retrieve. It may have to process, might, might have to do multiple requests to get as many tweets as possible. And what gets me is that you like trying to make sure that your computer doesn't like go to sleep. So like interrupt the connection, for example, but it's definitely, it's not like overnight. It's taken like, I think the max that I've let this kind of run has been like three or four hours. But then again, it's, I think it's also up to your, your research question. <laughs> Is that okay, Sham? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. All right, so um, moving forward, I don't know why it keeps restarting my thing. So like I was saying, so we wanna break we want to condense our data down. So, so far we have um, a data set called tweets that has our, um, our data, but it only has it to the two variables. We have our status ID and we have our text data, like the actual tweet itself. So the first um, goal is to count how um, count the most frequent words. So this is where we do something called tokenizing. And tokenizing is merely just um, extracting meaningful units of text. So first we have to break down each string, like each sentence, each tweet into individual words, and then um, pull out the meaningful or more interesting words that we could use for analysis. Um, so in order, in order for us to do this, there is a function in the tidy text package called unnest tokens. And all we do is we apply unnest tokens and we specify what our um, output variable is going to be called and what the input is going, the, what the variable that we are inputting is from our original data. So basically this says, assigned to tokens um, from the tweets data set, input text from the tweets data set and output a new variable called word. And if you look at the resulting dimensions of that, uh, of tokens, you get 131,000 records now versus 4,000 where we started to 131 and only two um, columns. I'll run that for you so you can see what that looks like. So we have our tweets and we have tokens. And then essentially you, you're still left with the, your status ID and then the actual word itself. So the first, this essentially would be like the first tweet. First Tidy Tuesday submission, Roman emperors and their rise to power in different eras interested to hear about. So you can see it's the same tweet. It has the same status ID. So one thing that you're gonna notice when you tokenize 
um, any corpus of text, and corpus of text is a body of text, is that there's going to be a lot of filler words. Those are called stop words, words like uh, the, and, to, in, things like that. They're not really meaningful. So thankfully, they're inside of the tidy text package. There's a data set that's already been created called stop words. And what we're going to do is we're going to anti join the stop words data set to our token. So this data set. And if you are familiar with joins and if you know what left join does, for example, left join. If you left join by a word, let's say if we were to left join by word, it would keep the matches and anti join um, only keeps the things that did not have a match. So it's the opposite of like a left join, for example, or, or right join. It would keep the opposite, the, the non matches. If you think about it, it's exactly what we want. The stop words data set is full of the filler words. So essentially, we want to keep only the words that are not in the stop words data set. So let's run that. So let's call data stop words and then anti join it. So now, once we've anti joined in the stop words, our tokens data set is only 73,000 long. We've almost stripped it in half. So now you see more meaningful words like. Tidy Tuesday, submission, emperors, rise, power, etc. Um, so the, now, yeah. wouldn't the opposite of anti-join be inner join? Possibly, yeah. So, I, like, that might just be a technique. I don't know. I, I, okay. I, no. Inner join gives you um, that return everything that matches in ma the tweets yes. with the stop words. So that's why we do the anti-join to remove everything that we don't want. Yeah, so anti-join okay. will give us, would join on word. So essentially you have the two columns here. So there, that was by design that we named our, um, uh, in this step, our output column word when we did the tokenization and then they matched. So, uh, let's see, this is the text. Um, let's look at the stop words. Here we go. So this is the word and here's our token. So it matched on the column word and then actually returns the non-matches. Okay, makes sense. Right? Okay. Yeah, it takes a little thinking. Yeah, a little confusing. Um, all right, so now the first goal was to just count the more frequent words. So at this point, we've done our tokenization and these are now to get the counts as merely using tools we kind of already are familiar with from the dplyr package. Um, so we can take tokens and pipe that into count and sort it. So we see that the most frequent words are t.co, HTTPS, so people have put links in here. Um, Tidy Tuesday, R stats, beta. And if we wanted to know the proportion of how, uh, for example, Tidy Tuesday is number three, but in relation to all the other words, the proportion of uh, Tidy Tuesday, we can just create a percentage of the total. So you just take N, which is the, um, this value right here over the sum of the entire uh, data frame times 100. So we see that only about six, Tidy Tuesday only accounts for about 6% of all of the words, which kind of makes sense because we have over uh, five, no, 100, we started off with over 131,000 words. And after we remove the stop words, we have 74,000 ish words. So it makes sense that Tidy Tuesday, 6% is still a, like a good chunk. All right, so now on to the next part, and this is sentiment analysis. What we wanna see is, um, we wanna see how the token data viz, this is gonna be our uh, selected word, is positively associated with other words 
in our original tweets data set. So from this quote came from um, Julia Silge's uh, text mining with R. And she says, when human readers approach a text, we use our understanding of the emotional intent of words to infer whether a section of text is positive or negative, or perhaps characterized by some other more nuanced emotion like surprise or disgust. That's essentially like what the sentiment analysis is looking for. And there are different ways, um, different um, lexicons to determine these kind of uh, sentiments. So the, the main steps that we're gonna take to reach our goal is we're gonna find an appropriate lexicon. We're gonna join that lexicon with our data, filter on the words that have a positive association, um, count the positive words, and then create vectors of unique status IDs that contain positive words and that contain the word data viz. So we have two separate vectors of status IDs and then filter our, Twitter, our tweet data by those status IDs for only those with data viz mentioned, and then add an indicator based on the second vector that we make to um, see if a positive word was mentioned at all, and then analyze the frequency. That's a high level overview of the steps, but now we're gonna go into it in more detail. So let's start off first, what is a lexicon? So a lexicon is basically a dictionary. It's a vocabulary of a person or language or a specific branch of knowledge. So like the finance industry has its own lexicon. Um, certain domains have their own lexicons. Um, and you can even create your own lexicon. And some of them are also copyrighted, so be sure that you have permissions from the users to use them in your research. But um, most of them are available. The, the three more, more general, popular general purpose lexicons are the AFIN, which scores words on a scale between negative five and five, being um, negative five, five being very poor and five being best. So um, I don't, I don't know. I feel like that's a little bit subjective because I, I know they have like, um, each one has individual, each rank has individual where zero is neutral. Um, but that would be up to, I guess, the user-ish to determine where their threshold is. Um, then there's Bing and NRC, which are binary um, classifications. Bin Bing data set is, uses positive and negative where the NRC uses yes, no for positive or negative. Actually, it's positive. So positive, yes or no. So all of these lexicons are based on unigrams, which is just single words. There are things called um, n-grams. So basically, you can have make sets of two words, sets of three words, sets of four words. Um, and But that comes with more practice in, in text analysis. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the library text data and that um, package has those three lexicons included. And when you install text data for the first time um, and run get sentiments, so you pass an NRC, it's going to um, the console, excuse me, there'll be a prompt in the console to ask you if you want to download this lexicon. But once you download it, I think you just have to download it once and then it'll be cached. So um, that's what I did here. We have our library text data and then we're gonna get our sentiments. And if you look at the NRC data, this is what it looks like. So you have words, um, it's 139,000, uh, sorry, 13,000 words with things like abandon, um, fear, which you can see that like a lot of them are similar, right? They're the same word or same um, roots of the word, but they have different sentiments, fear, negative, sadness, anger, and then it repeats like that. So what we want to do is we want to filter um, on just the ones that are uh, positive. 
So we have um, uh, so we filtered just the words that are have positive associations, and then we're going to join that with our tokens, our original tokens, and we're going to join it by the word. So if we take our tokens data, and let me remind you what that looks like. This is the tokens data that has already been um, filtered for the stop words, and then join it by um, this data set that has the positive sentiment. So um, po only the positive, because that data set included multiple emotions, but also binary positive and negative. So we filtered on only the positive sentiment with all encompassing positive sentiment. Um, okay, so now we just have to join that by word and count. So if you look at the resulting data set, you can see that we have uh, the most popular word is fun, top, learn, found, love, community. That makes sense. Those are pretty positive. Those are usually associated with more positive emotions. Um, and then what if you wanted to visualize that frequency? So if you scroll down, you get like uh, a bunch of these only appear like two, three, four times. Those are probably not as interesting to, to analyze. Maybe you want to look at only words that have appeared more than 75 times. So we're going to take the positive tokens and we're going to filter on n greater than or equal to 75. And then we're just going to do a basic bar chart. Um, and this is what it looks like. So if you, now you can see kind of more visually what that looks like, the top 75 words. You get fun, top, learn, found, love, community, learning, happy, share, and inspired. So that's really neat. So now what we wanna do is, sorry, we wanna know how many tweets with the data viz, with data viz included, also had at least one positive word. So we have to find two things. We have to find the tweets that included the term data viz. And then we also have to find the tweets that had at least one positive word and then combine them. So this is why we're going to use the status ID of the tweet to create two separate vectors. The first vector is going to contain the words, um, the status IDs that had data viz in the word, I mean, in the tweet. And then the second vector is going to have, um, is gonna filter on the word being in the NRC lexicon positive. So that NRC lexicon that we filtered on, on the, um, sentiment equals to positive. So if it's in that, if the word is in that, um, in that vector, then we're gonna filter on that and keep that and only keep the distinct status IDs because we noticed before that since it's tokenized, we have multiple status IDs for the same tweet. So we're just going to take the distinct ones, right? That distinct, gives you the unique status IDs. So now we're left, once we run those two, we're left with two separate vectors. Each of those vectors are, um, this is what they look like. So this is our data viz tokens. So these are all the status IDs in which data viz was mentioned. And then pause tokens, these are, all of the status IDs in which there was a positive word in it. 
So I hope at this point you're starting to see where this is going because now we have status IDs with two separate things, but now we need to combine them. So all we need to do is we need to filter out our, our tweet data, our original tweet data to for those tweets that contain data viz and then see if that ID also contained a positive word. So the first step is filter on data viz. So we're gonna filter our original tweet data on status ID. So the status IDs that, let me make this a little bit narrower. Okay, on the, sorry. DV tokens. So we, we wanna strip these tweets for only the tweets that contain data viz, the term data viz in, them, in that. So that's the first line here. Status ID in DV tokens status ID. Once we have those filtered out, which of those tweets also contain a positive word? So here, we're merely creating an indicator variable called positive that says if status ID is in the pause token, the second vector that we created, then give it an indicator of one, otherwise give it an indicator of zero. So that's the logic of if else. This is dplyr's if else. So basically it has the condition, if you can see, oh, it went away. So if else takes in the three arguments, your condition, your true, uh, your result when true and your result when false. So if I run this, I now have um, 605 observations with the tweets and the indicator variable. So these are the original data viz. Um, Token. So remember, we created this that had only the status ID, but now we have the original tweet and we have the um, an indicator whether a, there is a positive word or there's not a positive word in that in the tweet itself. So if we just look at the tweet, we can kind of guess. Um, so this one's saying there is so. Uh, what happened in the 80s to have players won their first title? So I'm thinking maybe one has a, is positively associated. Um, this one is zero. Try to bullet graph this week with arrows and annotations, all feedback. And the IDE doesn't really show you that much. Is welcome. And then the code. So this is, none of these words are, uh, according to the NRC lexicon, positively associated. So it got marked as zero. So all we have to do at this point is similar to getting the count is now we just have to get a frequency. We have the data that we need. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna count the total number of um, positives and then um, create a percentage. So because the indicator is zeros and ones, you can just sum the ones, the, the positive, um, technically the one is uh, a, positive a positive word in the tweet. And then, um, yeah, take that number over the sum of all of the, the positive words. So when you do that, you get a tibble, which is two by three with zeros and ones. And you see that it's a 55-45 split, 55% of our tweets contain 55% of our tweets that contain data viz are positive, positively associated, meaning that they have at least one positive word in the tweet itself. Do what you will with this information. It's To me, it's not super meaningful, um, but for demonstration purposes, this is kind of interesting to see, you know, how you could apply it to other tweets 
um, or other queries, search queries to see how people are feeling generally about a topic. Um, sorry, move forward. So to kind of um, put it all in perspective, there is a, a yes. Um, from the previous slide. Um, can you go back to, pre yeah, okay. So here under the positive column, we have zero and one. Um, um, zero in sentiment analysis, is it not neutral? Um, positive like one to N and negative are classified as negative and zero is classified as neutral. So do we classify zero here as positive or what? So in this case, this is our indicator variable that we created ourselves. So in this step, let me go back to the code itself. So in line 106, we created if status ID was in a positive, um, was in the vector that contains positive tokens. So we already did the filtering, Shem, and several steps ago, where we took the original um, NRC data, the NRC lexicon, I mean, and we filtered it on sentiment is positive. So they, the, okay. the okay, NRC gotcha. lex, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah and I then gotcha. mm, now yeah. we took only the status IDs and we created like our own indicator variable okay. with ones and All zeros. Right. We could have easily put like yes or no. Okay. In this instance, but it's just easier for um, to calculate proportions because you could just take the sum of the ones. Mm -hmm. Does okay, that make good. sense? Yeah, sure. So that's essentially what we did. We just took um, uh, the count of the positives and then took that count and divided it by the sum of, of ones. And that's how we were able to get these proportions here. So ones ends up being about 55%. All right, so that was sentiment analysis, but oftentimes it may be easier or simpler to, or if you wanna just start this way, to take a random sample of tweets, just to get a feeling or bird's eye view of how people are chatting at a given time about a certain topic. So if we wanted to see, what kind of what are people talking about in regards to Tidy Tuesday, hashtag Tidy Tuesday, all we need to do is just filter our, tw our tweet data on the positive words. Forget data viz, so that was just for the, the sentiment analysis example. So we're just going to take that, um, that vector that has the NRC um, words that were associated with positive sentiment and then create a that indicator variable again and filter on positive equals one. So if I go here and we take our original tweets data and we create that indicator variable again, just like we did um, in line 106, if status ID of our tweets is in positive tokens, then one, otherwise zero, and then filter on positive equal equal one. So that gives us um, 2,655 um, observations. So the best thing to do here in this case would be to get a random sample of tweets instead of looking at all of them individually. And by doing that, in order to do that, we, we are going to use sample n from the dplyr package and the set seed function, and that it comes with base. And if you're not familiar with taking a random sample, you have to set a seed um, for reproducibility. A seed is basically the number that you set in the function is basically the starting point in R's random number generator. And then that ensures that you can reproduce the same random num. They call it pseudo random numbers, um, but essentially, all you, 
all we're doing here is we're setting our C to 123. So if you were to do run this code, you would get the exact same tweets as I've presented. And then pick, just randomly pick 10 tweets from that data set. And when we do that, this is what we get. So, um, actually, let me wrap this in view so that maybe we can get a, see the text a little bit better. Oh, this is really annoying. Okay, so I finally did a Tidy Tuesday, an actual Tuesday. Finished my second Tidy Tuesday. Um, bins clean and empty. Missing out on school, such cool weeks, but I'm able to pick up and choose when I get back. Have some time during the holiday. Only in your RSTAT skills, I recommend Tai Chi. So people, I, to me, I would say people are pretty like feeling good about Tai Chi Tuesday. People are, are very welcoming and, and encouraging people to participate in Tai Chi Tuesday or having good um, um Pretty good things to say about Tidy Tuesday. Anyways, so um, yeah, that's that's about it for the content. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you all is some resources. Um, the type the text mining with R, if you want to get a little bit more information, is really helpful by Julia Silge and David Robinson. Um, it's not a uh, exhaustive read; it's pretty short and sweet, and I, it's it's quite helpful. Um, the R tweet documentation. So if you go to this link, you get um, the package down site for R tweet that includes um, some examples and how to get started and then some articles. Um, that would be really useful. And then also the Twitter developer portal, um, which is, uh, if you go here, you can just go to uh, developer.twitter.com and it gives you everything you need to know use cases solutions twitter even came out with their own products recently like they've really evolved their developer portal within the past couple years and it's very comprehensive um, and like i said uh, you can now um, use your own personal i mean you could always use your personal but in the past i've had to use an organization where i don't at, anymore and now as an educator, as educators, you can get access to premium API for free. Um, their application process is a little bit involved, but you honestly get, um, this is what my portal looks like. It's academic research product track and you get 10 million tweets a month, which is pretty cool. And all of these uh, are, um, included as well and you can get details on on caps on that and that's it any questions yeah um, um, I'll go ahead go ahead sure Cham. okay um do you have an idea how long it takes um to get this developer account like a month two months and a few days um it definitely doesn't take a couple days uh, it will take a couple of weeks. Right. They will email right. you, um, but it, expect for it to take, um, I think it took nearly three weeks for my application to get approved. Okay, okay. But you have to have a question, like a research question and almost like, um, it's almost like writing a research proposal where you almost have to have kind of what methods are you planning to use with this data because Obviously, a lot of people can abuse this kind of information and they want to know explicitly what you plan on doing. Um, doesn't have to be in that much detail, but their application is a little bit comprehensive. So expect to also spend a little bit of time filling that out. <laughs> can you go back one slide? Sure. How does it deal with like those emojis and like like HTML, I think right there, like a backslash N. How does, 
do you have any idea how it deals with those? Did this just exclude them? On the oh, right side. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. What does it do yeah, when so, it encounters that? So yeah, so the um the tokenizer is going to remove those those weird characters. So this is a, a line break. So the backslash backslash n bleh. Um and if you notice in our tokened words, our tokenized words, you saw Tidy Tuesday, but it was, it was without the hashtag. So the package strips off ampersands, pound signs, new line breaks, and emojis as well. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? All right, well, that's all I got. Um, let me see. I think there's some messages on the tweet. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, M yeah, Morgan um, put her blog. Her blog is amazing. I've been realizing because I'm also in the Tidy Models Book Club and it's just very robust. Uh, and then white space as a delimiter, most likely. Um, uh, most likely white space, most likely comma. Um, let's see, Cham found a book. There's also another um, article and that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everybody. That's all I got. Thanks Leila. Thank that's yeah, wonderful. Of course. So much. Have a great night, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>